Whenever I meet with a group that are about to be confirmed, pretty much the last thing I say to them after walking through all of the mechanics of the service is, I want you to know I think this is a pretty courageous thing that you're doing. And they sort of look at me like, I'm just joining the church. What's, <laughs> what's so courageous about that? And so we talk a little bit about their willingness to make this very clear and public commitment to serve Jesus Christ, even if it gets them in trouble, because the very nature of the gospel says that if you make that commitment to serve Jesus Christ and honor him as Lord as in all that you do, it could in fact really get you in trouble, particularly if another Lord in your life decides to offer a little preeminent pressure and you have to say, no, I am following Jesus as Lord and therefore I'm going to do this. And as you know, in the midst of this global Anglican communion of which we are part, we have sisters and brothers in various places across the planet who are in fact paying a high price, if not the highest price of all of martyrdom, just because they've made that commitment to follow Jesus. And I say to them, if and should persecution come your way, you're making a commitment not to bail. Uh, as I say, confirmation's not for whiners. Well, you know, in some ways, all of that's true in the calling of a new rector. Not that you're going to be persecuted, Mark, God being our helper. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, it's in fact a courageous act. It is, to quote the liturgy, a new beginning. A new beginning. Can I say it again? May I? It's a new beginning. That means going through the really exciting and dis a discovery of number one, learning the history. What's this place been through? Why did God decide to plant St. Edward's Mount Dora? What is St. Edward's mission? Why is it here? If St. Edward's were to kind of collapse in on itself, what would the community of St. Mount Dora say about what they are now missing that they used to have through the gift of this church? What is its community purpose? What is its function and calling? And a part of what you will do, Mark, as well as your leaders, is that you'll learn, you'll sit with the people who've been here actually the longest. Tell me what you remember about life at St. Edward's a long time ago, even before Father Murray was rector. Tell me, <laughs> tell me what, and what drew you here. Why did you come? Because what you're trying to do is discern purpose. What is the divine purpose? purpose for this church. And then out of that, you'll have a collection of things that you'll see. And so the question will be for you is the new rector is, okay, in the light of all of these strands that have made up the history of this church, what is it that we believe God is calling us to hold up now in 2016 that is both true to the history and yet, at the same time, is in fact a new emphasis for the life of the world, for the health of this congregation, for the calling and ministry that God might want to do through St. Edward's into the life of those who are gathered here, as well as the greater community and beyond. In some ways, Mark, that's your task. And out of that, find ways, both through volunteers, program, and the like, to live out and implement this kind of vision, this vision that God gives and imparts to his people. So to call Mark is, in fact, both an act of history, where we have a legacy that we're bringing forward in the life of this man, that you believe he will, in fact, do that. He will be a successor to the best of what's come before him. And you're also praying and hoping, at least I hope you are, that there'll be something fresh, that there'll be something that will not be kind of wacky over there, but will actually be deeply in line with the way God has moved in the past and still be new. Now, here's where the scriptures come in. To do anything new takes courage. It's easy to go do everything that people have always done. And as you know, there will always be people who will complain when the new begins to happen. And so that's why the Joshua reading leads us off. 
be strong and courageous. And in fact, in the reading, it, God is speaking this to Joshua. He says that to him like three times over the course of about four verses. It's like, do you get the point? You could be afraid. This could require more of you than you expected. Are you up for the task? Be strong and courageous. Keep at it. And to lead effectively requires that kind of determination. It requires a certain level of a willingness to be able to make the time to pray, discern, collaborate, and out of that hear the leadership of God and then begin to act on it as something that is fresh and new. And if there's anything that every congregation needs, it needs a new beginning and a leader who is willing to do the fresh and the new. To hear deeply from the people in the congregation about what life has been. Out of that discern purpose and then begin to carry it forward in a new way amongst this generation. In this group of people under your leadership. So the call. Be strong and courageous. The second thing that I want to emphasize is this very little brief reading that came out of the gospel reading where Jesus is commissioning his disciples. Some people can almost say it by heart. They've heard it so often. The harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. Pray, notice he says, pray that God would raise up harvesters in his harvest field. Why does he say that? Because the temptation of every congregation, including probably in the earliest congregations in the life of our church, which is why this shows up in the Gospel of Luke, is to think and emphasize more strongly than anything else the inter internal care and life of a congregation, what some people sort of call in-reach. That's what we do to care for one another. We're making sure people are okay. We're going to the hospitals. We're checking in on people who are now homebound, can't get in the same way that they used to. We're working with families who are in places of difficulty. We're making room for people who are beginning to find their way in. All of that is the in-reach part. It takes extra effort, or actually more accurately, it takes a greater level of prayer to begin to not only see the purpose of a church, as well as the rector, is to care for those who are inside the four walls, but to ask serious questions about how can we begin to reach out into the community that God has given us. I think it takes vision, quite honestly. Because you see, Jesus began this passage, not in this reading, but when it's offered, He's looking out on the people on the hillsides, and they remind him of sheep. And he says, what does it say that he says? He says he notices that they are literally, in the Greek, harassed, like sheep with, without a shepherd. In other words, Jesus has a vision that causes him to be moved with compassion. And out of that compassion, he turns to his disciples and says, pray, pray that people reach out to these people. Not just take care of each other, but reach out. What <laughs> the hated word among Episcopalians, evangelism. <laughs> Beloved, any vision from God for his church under his authority requires, not as optional, but requires that kind of compassionate vision that literally impels you into the life of your community. There's this wonderful prayer that we offer in morning prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us with your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. That's evangelism. And it begins by God literally changing our hearts, beginning to see our community as a community in need. And out of that, being impelled. God, how can we reach out to these people? It's like the veil gets lifted. You begin to see people in a different kind of light. 
And all of that, quite frankly, is the fruit of prayer. It's not, oh, we need to start a new evangelism program now. Almost all of those just die on the vine because nobody in his own strength wants to reach out of his own personal comfort zone and then begin to talk a little bit about what faith in Christ means. It takes courage to do that. But when God begins to work on the interior of your heart, something begins to happen inside of you. And as your heart begins to change, something begins to impel you in a way that wasn't true before. And when that begins to happen, then you become hungry to learn how, oh God, can we reach our community with the gospel? It doesn't start with program. It actually begins with prayer and asking God to change our hearts. As you know far better than I do, Mount Dora is going through an extraordinary shift. All kinds of people are moving into this community. Things are bubbling up and happening here in a way that is very exciting for the future. The only people for whom it's not exciting are the people who've lived here a while and they complain about the traffic. I get, I get that. So the question is, if God is sending these people our way, what is he asking us to do? That's the question. If God is sending these people our way, what is he asking us to do? It seems to me those are the things that make for fresh vision. Learning from the past, thinking about what applies now, calling people to prayer for God to impart to us not just the capacity to see something new, but literally a changed heart that we might be more available for God, for God's purposes for this church in this community. You need to know, and I, I said this earlier to Father Murray, I believe with all of my heart that Mark has, in fact, the gifts, the stamina, and even the courage to be able to lead this congregation into that kind of future. I'm excited that he is here. I look forward to what God is going to do at St. Edward's. It could be and it could be and will be an increasingly amazing place in a way that causes the people downtown in the coffee shops and the gelato places and the antique stores and the art galleries to say, oh yeah, St. Edward's, I know about them. And they'll tell a story. That's when you know you're touching a community. And that is God's call on this church. So Mark, you're right here. I'm supposed to give you an exhortation. Stand up. <laughs> this is pretty close, isn't it? <laughs> no, 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 you're right here. Ask God to give you the courage that you need to lead well. It will tax and ask everything of you. It will demand the very best of your heart. You will be driven to prayer again and again and again. Look for God to see who he is raising up in this congregation who get the vision. People who can join with you side by side and pray with you into this future. And see what the Lord will do to provide. Because he wants this church to begin to touch this community in new ways. And he will give people who have changed hearts and real courage to do it together. So that, Father Mark, but you also will do what? Rejoice. Rejoice because of what you see God doing. And you will say, only the Lord could have brought this about. But we're excited that God is doing it. So I look forward to this. I'm so glad that you're here, Mark. May God continue to pour on this church the courage of St. Edward the Scotsman. May he pour upon this place the capacity to be zealous, compassionate, and courageous in a way that touches this community with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen.